Hi, ArtfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday afternoon, September the 17th. The Atlantic Basin tropical scene is very quiet right now with only the remnants of a tropical depression named Gordon out in the middle part of the Atlantic Ocean. Nothing currently over the Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico, but boy, that could, that could change big time uh, during the middle or latter part of next week. The overall weather pattern is changing so that uh, it will produce strong upward motion over the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico region during the middle or latter part of next week, and all of that favors the uh, development of a tropical system that could indeed become a powerful uh, tropical storm threatening the southern U.S., the eastern U.S., and perhaps both the southern and eastern U.S. Again, we're talking seven to ten days away uh, during the middle or latter part of next week, and we'll go into uh, some of the reasons why red flags are popping up all over the place for this potential serious tropical threat later next week. First of all, here is a look at the tropical scene right now. This was a tropical depression. A, uh, for the last 24 to 48 hours or so. It's uh, dissipated into really just the remnants of what was Tropical Depression. Gordon had never attained tropical storm status. Nothing going on right now in this part of the Atlantic Basin. However, sea surface temperatures are very warm in both areas, uh, for the most part above normal for this time of the year. We just passed the uh, peak time of the Atlantic Basin tropical season when sea surface temperatures in these areas are at their highest. And all indications are that a, a tropical disturbance that regularly propagates uh, eastward across the global tropics will be uh, moved to a favorable posi position for upward motion right in this part of uh, uh, the Atlantic Basin, middle, latter part of next week. And uh, that could just open the door for the development of a powerful tropical storm system, perhaps uh, somewhere right in this area right here, the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, and all residents along the Gulf Coast and East Coast certainly should pay attention to any storm development later next week. Well, certainly periodically we have discussed the Madden-Julian Oscillation. This is an index that meteorologists use to track a tropical disturbance that regularly propagates across the uh, global tropics on a regular basis with a cycle of about 30 to 60 days or so. And depending on the uh, given position of that tropical disturbance, it can have an impact anywhere around the northern hemisphere and it gives us a clue as to temperature and precipitation patterns uh, in, for example, the Atlantic Basin region of the Caribbean Sea and uh, the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the way to look at this particular diagram here is that the Madden-Julian Oscillation kind of propagates through what we call different phases. We're right in this region right here, the 16th and 17th of September, and these are the phases, what we call phases, basically represent different locations around the globe for this tropical disturbance. It rotates on this kind of a plot in a counterclockwise fashion going in this direction, and basically we're moving from phase six into phase seven uh, during uh, the bulk of next week. And that particular phase and phase eight happen to be quite favorable for the uh, development and potential intensification of tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico region, in the Caribbean Sea. And so this movement of this particular tropical disturbance is why uh, red flags are popping up for a potential serious tropical threat later next week, maybe the middle or latter part of next week, anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, but all residents, again, across, uh, across the coastal part of the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. East Coast should pay attention to any kind of a tropical system that does indeed uh, form later next week. There's nothing on uh, the, uh, the maps right now in terms of tropical systems in those areas, so it's a little certainly premature to say exactly uh, who is most vulnerable uh, for a system that hasn't even formed yet. But again, the overall weather pattern is the key here. That's evolving into one that should take the lid off uh, of uh, uh, for tropical development later next week, uh, maybe seven to ten, ten days out, 
in that very warm area of Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, let's get into more specifics as to why that NJO or tropical disturbance uh, can play a role in the formation of uh, tropical storms in, uh, in the Atlantic Basin or pretty much anywhere around the Northern Hemisphere. This is from the ensemble run of the European model for the current week. This is kind of an average uh, for this given week that ends on September 21st. It be, began on uh, the 14th here. So it's for this particular week. And I want to particularly focus on the uh, Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico region right here. What we're looking at, way up there, 200 millibars. This is the upper level part of the atmosphere. We're basically looking at convergence, divergence in the upper part of the atmosphere. Right now in this circled region, uh, we have a convergence for the most part in the upper part of the atmosphere. And the atmosphere always seeks to balance things out. So if there's convergence in the upper part of the atmosphere, the lower part of the atmosphere uh, it will feature a divergence. That is an inhibitor, an inhibitor to upward motion. So right now, this is basically putting a cap on a tropical storm formation over places like the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. In fact, there's no activity right now whatsoever, even though we're at the peak time of the tropical season here. And again, it's just not favorable because of the position of that tropical disturbance. Right now, we have an unfavorable pattern for tropical storm formation uh, or intensification in the Gulf of Mexico region or the Caribbean Sea. Now, take a look at what happens one week from right now. And here we go. This is uh, the average for next week of convergence or divergence across uh, the globe here. And again, a lot of this is related to the movement of that tropical disturbance uh, that we track with the NJO, the Madden Julian Oscillation. This is for the, uh, the average of next week from the 22nd to the 29th. And you have just a beautiful pattern here of divergence uh, in the upper part of the atmosphere. Again, we're talking about the upper part of the atmosphere here. And you have a, a, a divergence for next week in the upper part of the atmosphere. That will be compensated by convergence coming together of the air down at the surface level that in turn leads to enhanced upper motion right in this part of the Atlantic Basin. So right here where you have this strong divergence aloft, you'll have convergence at the surface. Again, all related to the positioning of that tropical disturbance. And this will lead to strong upward motion right in this area. This is a big red flag this time of the year when sea surface temperatures still are pretty much at their highest levels in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean Sea. Strong upward motion, the middle, the latter part of next week. Again, seven to ten days from now, this uh, spells trouble. It looks like a serious tropical storm threat, where, where, whether it ends up in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the central Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, certainly too early to tell, but this is a pattern, pattern recognition here that tells us very serious tropical storm uh, system could develop right in this part of the Atlantic Basin, again, middle or latter part of next week. Well, let's kind of quickly go through a couple of different models here. This is the uh, 12Z GFS model from early today, uh, the model run. And we'll go ahead through that 7 to 10 day period and see what this particular model is suggesting. And again, nothing is on uh, the board right now in terms of uh, tropical system, but the pattern is evolving that should uh, just take the lid off and uh, favor development later next week. Here we are, the beginning of the day today, beginning of the day, day today with this weak low pressure area over the uh, interior part of South Carolina. This formed and intensified yesterday along coastal Carolina, then shifted to the north and west inland. It was never a named tropical system very well could have been probably should have been by NOAA's National Hurricane Center. It had a lot of characteristics, tropical characteristics, and probably should have been a name to tropical storm, whatever. It caused some serious flooding across portions of the Carolinas. Now, its range shield is having all kinds of difficult pushing up to the north and east. 
Uh, last week we talked about a blocking pattern in the overall atmosphere with high pressure and situated over southeastern Canada. That blocking pattern continues today and strong high pressure to the north and east is really inhibiting the northward progression of this rain shield and it looks like basically southern and central Virginia may get a decent amount of rainfall out of it but anywhere uh, across uh, north, let's say north of the Mason-Dixon line less so and certainly lesser up across Philadelphia and New York City in this pattern here that a, a, a weak low pressure ends up shifting off the coast and it does intensify once it moves back out over the warm waters of the western Atlantic we'll have to watch uh, for this activity here later tomorrow tomorrow night into the day on Thursday it could end up uh, strengthening enough to cause some heavy rainfall right along coastal sections from Long Island down to southern New Jersey for example then we'll continue to move forward here weekend probably shaping up to be pretty nice across the uh, mid-Atlantic region now we're going quickly here through the latter part of the upcoming weekend this is still that Carolina low that just kind of circulates around rotates around here over the western Atlantic Ocean but watch this area right here for this particular model run of the GFS and here we go into Tuesday of next week one week from right now and here it comes here comes a system that uh, the GFS formed over the Caribbean Sea and then intensify uh, significantly uh, by the time we get to the middle latter part of next week right here over the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then it uh, pushes it right up along the eastern states here and very well could become a heavy rainmaker all the way up from Florida to New England again speculation phase right now but the overall pattern suggests this is absolutely on the table this particular scenario this is going all the way out to Sunday September 29th again we're talking 7 to 10 or 11 days out uh, from right now so uh, uh, that's uh, what the latest GFS model run is doing. Now we'll take a look at the Canadian model run. And here it is. This is from 12Z also earlier today, the latest Canadian model run. And uh, we'll move quickly through this. Rain, again, limited in its northern extent from this Carolina low. Uh, certainly less rainfall in Philadelphia and New York City as compared to D.C. because of that high pressure to the north and east kind of sits and rotates out there. We'll have to keep an eye on it because it could strengthen a little bit in the near term what we're talking, maybe one, two, three days out here as it sits over the warm waters of the western Atlantic. Now, let's push forward here through the weekend into the uh, early and middle part of next week. This is all the way out now till next Tuesday. Here's the beginning sign of that same tropical system that GFS has first originating over the Caribbean Sea and then taking on uh, very warm waters underneath it and uh, a little bit farther to the west but nonetheless a powerful powerful system by the middle part of next week this is uh, late Wednesday Wednesday night forecast it's a week from tomorrow We're talking again seven to ten days out uh, this particular model run does push it to the north and east albeit a little bit farther to the west a little bit more inland compared to the uh, latest GFS model. Don't take either one of those models verbatim right now, but recognize the pattern here. And again, I uh, emphasize that I think there's a serious tropical storm threat uh, for the southern and eastern U.S. middle, latter part of next week. So certainly stay tuned over the next several days. I will try to focus in on some of those details that are just uh, too far away to really uh, finalize right now. But again, big time tropical threat later next week. That's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.